know, I chose not to shake Patrick's <laughs> hand, <laughs> keeping a clear distance from him. Congratulations, Bob, on starting your high performance leadership project. This is very exciting. For those of you who don't know, after you've worked through the speech manuals and the competent leadership manuals, you come to a point where you do your high performance leadership project, and this is at a point where you're about to earn the Distinguished Toastmasters recognition, the designation. It's the bachelor's degree for Toastmasters. So Bob is almost there. He's doing the first speech of this project, and he did it very well. The evaluation asked me, did he convey his vision? Absolutely. From the get-go, he told us that his vision as an education chair was to get presenters, to get officers at the tables, and to get the resources needed for this melee that's coming up in January. He conveyed his vision well. Not only did he convey his vision, but he also gave us the objectives. This speech was so well organized, he clearly explained the five objectives, and he gave us examples of those objectives. Interesting and entertaining speakers, topics relevant to all officers. It's obvious that he had his organization down. So that is what I heard tonight. I heard a very efficient and organized speech. What I saw tonight was a man that is very well versed in the stage. He moves across this stage with ease and confidence. And he's extremely animated. His first thing that he said tonight was, I wanted to give you a definition of leadership, I believe it was. I wanted to give you a definition. And here was his animated gesture. I wanted to give you a definition of leadership. <laughs> I've never seen this gesture before. I never even noticed it before. But it caught our attention, and we were immediately roped in. This is an excellent sign of a great speaker. Somebody who uses gestures, makes them big, and invites us in. And that's exactly what that gesture did. And his movement across the stage was also very purposeful. It allowed him to connect with the audience, make eye contact with the audience. And he did that well. So these are things that I saw. I also want to talk about one thing that is amazing that he does is his vocal variety. He was loud and he was clear. And just to verify, those of you in the back of the room, were you able to hear Bob? Yes? Were you able to understand everything that Bob said? Yes. He's a very clear, concise speaker, and his voice projects wonderfully. I'm not sure that my voice has that much projection, so I'm very jealous. I'm getting a thumbs up. That's always good to hear. But those of you who are learning, this is a great man to learn from for vocal variety. In addition to having that clear voice, another thing that he does is he speaks slowly. And he doesn't do it all the time, but he does it to emphasize certain points. So I would highly recommend those of you who are wanting to improve your vocal variety, focus on Bob's speeches and see how you can integrate his vocal variety into your own speeches in order to improve. Areas for improvement, even with a seasoned Toastmaster, there's always areas for improvement. One of the things that it asked in the, in the book was, what, how effectively did the speaker convey the importance of the vision and the impact it could if it became a reality? So I thought that you kind of touched on that lightly. And being a seasoned Toastmaster, I know the impact of the melee. But I felt like, yeah, maybe you could, maybe you could hit that home. Why is this so important that we go to this melee? Why is it important that we have these entertaining speakers? Why is that important? So what's, and what's the reality if that happens? What's going to happen? Are we going to become a distinguished club? Are we going to become a distinguished area? So like I said, you touched on that, but I thought that could hit home a little stronger. And his conclusion, fantastic. He summarized his five objectives, and he ended on a very important note. And this is how I felt. I felt invited. I felt welcomed. He invited us all as his closing statement. And he gave us the date. Who remembers the date? 
January 14th. <laughs> January 14th. So he ended on a very important note, the invitation and the date. Well done. I look forward to seeing your vision become a reality. Mr. Toastmaster.